And for people who don't get political news, who never pick up a newspaper, who never turn on CNN, who never even bother with Fox News, those people really have no idea what's going on. And that means we have to bend over backwards, not to suck up to these people, not to make excuses for them, but at least to communicate the basic facts. You don't have a vaccine because you're not getting a child tax credit because all the good things that are happening at the state level, they have to know why they're getting those things. Oh, you have a chip manufacturing plant because a democratic president put that into effect and a democratic governor went out and solicited bids. And now you have X number of thousands of jobs. It's that simple. You can't talk broad themes. You have to boil it down to nuts and bolts and you have to be pithy. What do I mean by pithy? How about this? Republicans want to kill your kids. It's actually true. If you're going to oppose vaccinations, if you're going to stop breakthrough medical research, if you're going to allow minors and all sorts of people to get semi-automatic weapons, which they use to shoot up schools, well, then you are responsible for kids' health and death, unfortunately. It has to be that simple and that direct, and it has to be over and over and over again. How did we get here, right? She wants to make this argument. This is uh, Washington Post. Jen Rubin blasted for wild claim. Republicans want to kill your kids. It's actually true. Now, you can't talk broad themes, she said in the in the clip. You have to boil it down to nuts and bolts, and you have to be pithy. I don't know what pithy is, but, hey, I'll give it my best shot. You are facing inflation because a Democrat passed spending bills, which contributed to inflation increasing. The reason why you're not in a recession right now is because a bunch of liberal economists put out this whole PR push that recession, oh, this recession is not the same. It's a different recession. They redefined the re recession so Biden could avoid a recession or the perception of a recession, right? You're facing all these crimes in New York, all these budget shortfalls in blue states like Chicago, Massachusetts, New York. Because of all the sanctuary cities in there, taking in the migrants that they have no budget for. Chicago being the prime example, almost a billion dollars in debt, a budget shortfall because they're taking illegal immigrants into their, into their city and forcing their citizens to be second place. Because two can play that game too. And this idea that about, oh, you, you they want 17 year olds to have semi-automatic weapons. You want 17-year-olds, because they believe that they're a different gender, to castrate themselves, to, to, to make their body more in line with their delusion. You don't think that hurts kids? There's been no evidence to suggest that people who do gender-affirming surgery don't, still commit suicide, still have, a high suicide, I, a su, suicide, still have a higher chance of suicide. Like, make it make sense. But this is the left, Right? And the reason why I'm making this video is because uh, the left is coming across almost cult-like to me, all right? And uh, here's, here's a tweet that I want to share before I go on to the, my next thing, right? This is the perfect example of the current state of politics. Cenk Yogurt, right, we talked about him, wants a policy change. Elon offers a path. Emma wants a fictional rivalry, not progress. The left is a cult. They don't have goals, just enemies. And I believe I agree with the sentiment. I believe in the sentiment that the left don't care about progress. They don't care about making your life better. They don't care about uh, actually fixing solutions. All they care about is boogeymen creating something to fear. Oh, my God, look at these people. Oh, my God, this guy's Hitler. Oh, my God, he's a threat to democracy. It goes coincide exactly to what the left-wing view of things are. And I want to make it an example because, as you know, a U.S. soccer star was hit by major news outlets after doing Trump dance. Make it make sense. NFL players been doing the dance. John Jones been doing the dance. But the minute Christian Pulisic hit the hit the Trump, now the the the, the news outlets want to make it political. This is how you know these people are partisans. Pulisic confirms that it wasn't political when he did the Trump dance, which he said everyone's doing it, and he thought it was funny. 
This is the left. The whole left narrative is to create enemies. This, this is reality. Backed by millions in liberal dark money, teachers group group teaches climate activists to talk like a human being. Imagine that. The left don't know how to communicate so badly that they, they can't even know how to talk like normal human beings. They want to replace phrases like climate change and with extreme weather, the group suggested. Here's a clip, and this is, this is how radical the left is. The left like to pretend that they're in the middle. They're not in the middle. They're radical. Look at this short clip that I have of Justin Trudeau saying that it is better to care about climate change. You should be more concerned about climate change than feeding your own kids. Yes, you heard that right. Feeding your own kids. You should care about climate change more than feeding your own kids. Let's take a look. It's really, really easy when you're in a short-term survive. I got to be able to pay the rent this month. I got to be able to buy groceries for my kids to say, okay, let's put climate change as a slightly lower priority. And that's something that's instinctive. When the storm comes, you want to hunker down and just sort of huddle up and wait for it to blow over. We can't do that around climate change. And unfortunately, we have an awful lot of political amplification of the kind of narrative that is directly opposed to that. It's and then you wonder why many people think climate change is a scam. Climate change is, like I said, it, to me, it's, a, it's this very big scam, right? This idea that you create a fear, you create people to be anxiety about this. Like, Climate change, these discussions have been happening since the 1992s. Look, Gen Z don't believe me. They pretend like all of a sudden, oh, this conversation happened five years ago, two years ago. No. This conversation has been happening since the 60s. And every prediction these climate change people have been pushing has been wrong. They owe for 70. Oh, for 70. And you want to believe their next prediction? Make it make sense. The organization Potential Energy Correlation said uh, it creates and executes marketing campaigns uh, grounded in deep analytical analytics. Yeah, okay. Human-centric stories that are proven to proven to persuade. Nope. Look at this. Say more, less of climate change, sustainability, warming, overheating, safe and healthy, extreme. The organization also features a series of slides telling participants not to exaggerate and explain that while climate crisis and climate emergency work for people who are already terrified of climate change. This this is what I'm talking about. Create a perception. Controls people's perceptions. They want to talk about, oh my God, look at how much damage Hurricane Milton did. Of course. You see housing prices? You destroy a house, it costs way more than it did last time a hurricane came here 10 years ago. We have not hired a hurricane. Like, do you know the biggest hurricane that ever hit Florida? I think his name is Hurricane Andrew, at least South Florida. It was Hurricane Andrew. Category 5 hurricane. Milton ain't ish. But for some reason... People in Florida should be scared about climate change. Oh, my God, look at climate change. Extreme weather is affecting Florida. But we got hit by a Category 3 hurricane. Category 2 when it made landfall, at least more centrally into Florida. When in the past, we got hit with Hurricane Andrew in the 1990s, I believe. I wasn't even born yet when Andrew hit. Category 5 hurricane. But extreme weather is drastically affecting Florida. This is why I don't believe climate changers. You guys are just trying to fear monger. That's the reality. And people are tired of it. You really politicizing the Trump dance? So what, Trump do it? It used to be called the twist. A, a, a dance in, in, in the 70s, I think. In the 80s, I don't know. It was before I was born. Now the left politicized it. Right? But a, a, a father trying to fight so his kids don't get castrated. Because their mom decides to move to California where it's a sanctuary state for gender-affirming care. But Republicans will kill your kids. Okay. Liberal ideology will kill you. The climate change, the, uh, the climate change scam is telling you that you should be fearful of having children because of the climate. And you wonder why a lot of young people have anxiety about the climate. Because they've been conditioned and taught this. You don't believe me? I got something for you. Here's a quote from Zuby that I, I, I agree with. The more fair and equal society becomes, the less progressives are genuinely needed. This is the biggest reason why they become completely unhinged over the past decade. Con constantly inventing new dragons to slay and causes to latch onto. 
even if there are imaginary. And my argument is this is exactly what climate change is. Climate change is an exaggerated, imaginated problem. Imaginative, dramatic. They could talk, because end of the day, 0 for 70, all your deep anal analysis. You can't, you can't theorize your way out of outcomes. Everything you predicted so far for the past 60 years have not come true at all, not even the slightest. The hottest year ever, 2023, was one degree, not even a degree. It was like 0 0.6 degrees higher than average. And it was hot before. It, it, it was hot before, a couple 30 years ago. Their, their, their analysis has not been able to prove that there's a correlation with carbon emissions and global warming. There has been no correlation. <laughs> like, like we, we burn more coal in the past than we are doing right now, yet 2023 was the hottest year ever. Something's off here. But, but we're supposed to uh, uh, kill ourselves. We're supposed to uh, put our flourishing on hold because of climate change. I don't care about climate change. What I care about is climate danger. You have to show me why this climate is dangerous to me. How is, how is global warming a threat to human survival when global cooling is more of, the, more of a threat on human survival? Climate changes don't care. That's what I'm saying. They don't care about us. They don't care about making our lives better. They don't care about the climate and how it affects human beings. They only care about the fact that they can weaponize and use this issue to create a rivalry, to create some friction, to create an us versus them mentality, to justify giving them power and control. That's the reality. It's communism. Give us a justification to rule over your life. The goals of uh, the goal, their goal is not to educate exclusion. The goal of the U.S. government is to create activists. No more than this has to end. The teachers admit that she doesn't know when America was founded. She also said that she doesn't teach her kids the curriculum, but instead teaches her about protesting anti-racism, activism, and Black Lives Matter. This, this is the left for you. This is the left. And then they wonder why the, the, the Republicans, why many voters repudiated them during the election. They wonder why. They're so surprised. They're like, oh, my God. Why are we losing ratings? What, 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 what's going on? Holy smokes, right? I'm going to show you this clip. Bill O'Reilly reveals that Comcast wants to throw MSNBC overboard because their hateful rhetoric is tanking NBC, NBC's views. But I thought the left was so tolerant. No, they're not. They're only tolerant if you comply with their worldview, if you, if you go along what they want you to go along, if you fit in their little box. If you're a black person, they expect you to be a Marxist, progressive, liberal, at least. That's the, most, that's the, least, the least tolerant they'll have. You have to be a liberal at least. If you're not, you get the most racist vitriol. You get the most hateful rhetoric. Look at Obama. How he was talking about the black man that they didn't want to vote for Kamala Harris. Even though Kamala Harris has not put up any positions, any policy, that was actually going to resolve some of the problems that men were dealing with. And he expected them to vote because of skin color, because of identity politics. <laughs> I'm done talking. Let's check out this clip of Bill O'Reilly exposing the plan to throw MSNBC overboard because of their hateful rhetoric. Let's take a look. Okay, I said, you two, we're going to have to try to mend some uh, cliche fences, and you two are going to go in there, and you're going to try to tamp it down. Because Comcast knew the next day they were going to announce that MSNBC is vapor. That is a huge meteor story. Why Enormous. is it vapor? Just because they're there spinning no it off more... and putting them in the... Well, they're spinning off a bunch There's of no brands. There's no spinoff. Yeah, there is. It's a no, spinoff company. There's no spinoff. That see, you buy the propaganda, Cuomo. Oh, okay. See what I mean? About I'm smart just saying people? what's being reported. All right. But what, how do what do you know? Yeah, I know. But why would you believe what's being reported? You want the real story? Here yes, it comes. Please. So they're uncoupling their word Comcast, MSNBC from NBC News. That means MSNBC has no resources at all. None. They're not going to be able to pay these people millions of dollars, racial matter, whatever she's making. NBC News is saying, we don't want you around. Why? Because NBC News' numbers, uh, Lester Holt and the Today Show, are catastrophe because half the country equates NBC News with MSNBC, and they won't watch. 
So NBC is desperately trying to save the mothership of information, mm. and they have to throw MSNBC overboard. They're not putting anything into MSNBC. They want to sell it. So where's Georgie Soros now? Georgie's buying radio stations. You can get MSNBC for nothing. They'll give it to you. They don't want any more of this. Why? Because it's hateful. Not because it's so far left. The whole NBC Comcast hierarchy is far left. But it's hateful. They hate Trump. They hate people who vote for Trump. Everybody knows that. And you know what's next? The View. ABC News is going to have to cut ties with The View. And you saw that today or yesterday when Sonny Hostin had to read a legal statement in the middle of a segment. The lawyers got in her, get Whoopi Goldberg's ear, and it said, we're bringing a statement in on a teleprompter. She reads it. So it is over for these far left networks. Done. Never coming back. Dracula's stake in the heart. Who benefits? News Nation may, but CNN, which is on the ropes, too, will probably get some MSNBC viewers. Wow. There you go. What do you think of that? <sighs> well, I'm certainly not going to accuse them of not making sense. The only thing I'll disagree with Bill O'Reilly is I don't even think CNN is going to get any of those viewers. Right. I mean, the only way CNN lives is if conservatives start tuning into CNN. And I think we're starting to because of Scott Jennings, Sher Michael, Singleton is the one guy that I uh, I point out a lot. I, I like Sher Michael. Um, but the days of just getting your news on, on TV, I think it's over. If you look at the trends, right? And the day, the younger generation, I think 40% of them get their news from social media. Y'all got it. The news, CNN, they continue to have to compete because of people like me. We'll just talk about the news. And we're like, hey, here's an article. We're pulling it up here on X where a lot of people get their news from. This is the tide. Look, I'll show you a clip here. So the reason, one of the big reasons he bought Twitter slash X is because he wanted to make it his own platform, remake it in his own image. And I think this really gets at it. Look at this. The party ID among those who regularly use X slash Twitter for Look at news. that, 65%. Back in 2022, 65% of those who regularly use Twitter slash X for news were Democrats. So all, all, all Elon did was made it more neutral. And you got liberals like Brian, I forgot, his, the Cassistine brothers, whatever, complaining about, oh, my God, look, there's such a right-wing bias on X. Reality is, it still heavily leans Democrat. It's just, it's more balanced now. These people, they're so used to privilege that equality feels like oppression. The life of a leftist. Just 31% were Republicans. Look at where we are today. Just a completely different picture. Now it's basically split between Democrats at 48%, Republicans at 47%. And what I should note, Mr. Berman, is this now, this new overall makeup, matches the overall electorate far better. And more than that, more than that, John, look at where Mr. Musk's net worth is today versus where it was just two months ago. He is the richest man in the world by far. Two months ago, look at this. His net worth was $252 billion. Look at where we are today, $314 billion. He is by far the richest man ever to be on the... And remember on the left? Oh, my God. <laughs> you bought Twitter for $44 billion? 2024. Look at them now. Like... This is this this always validates what I always thought about the leftists. The leftists are short-term thinkers. They only see right in their face. They can't think long term. They can't think, oh, we're gonna take a we're gonna take the hit now so we can eat caviar later. They don't they don't understand delayed gratification. They don't understand sacrifice. They all they understand is, oh my God, they only see what's in front of them. They don't see 10 years, two years down the line. They they it's like they don't process long-term thinking. If we raise minimum wage, we all get paid $15 an hour. Yeah, we get a livable wage. Yeah. Us. Well, how you, that's not sustainable. How, if your job ain't worth $15 an hour, what do you think the company's going to do? Either that got, they got to raise prices on everyone else. Look at DoorDash. They got to raise prices on everyone else. Fire some of you. Limit your hours for those who stay. You're not, you're not going to make the money you think you're going to make. And then when he actually smacks them in the face, they go, oh. Our, the the reason why the business owner can pay us 
is because the customer is the reality, the one paying our salaries. Yes, now you get it. Because at the end of the day, capitalists, socialists can complain about capitalists all they want. Capitalists are better and, and know how to use resources more efficiently than a socialist ever can. Because the socialists believe the socialist is always entitled to other people's money. And this is why they always squander it. That's why they always lose it. Look at the statistics for uh, winning the lottery. When you receive money you didn't work for, you squander it a lot more than money you did work for. That is a reality of human nature. This is why socialism doesn't work because socialists and leftists, more specifically, don't understand human nature. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with me, disagree with me? I'd like to hear your thoughts about it in the comment section below. What do you think about the left-wing uh, view of things? Do you believe that they have a cultish aspect to their collectivism? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.